Previously, you met Elena Ciccatelli, a Lyft corporate salesperson who's used her knowledge from the rideshare service and her love for the entrepreneurial spirit to launch a brand new podcast called Side Gig Central. Ciccatelli says side gigs generally embody three forms. Asset-based, such as renting a room, a vacation home, or an idle vehicle. Plug and play, like rideshare service or freelance service platforms. And the category for her own podcast, Sweat Equity. Yes, you still have your main gig for your paycheck to pay bills, survive. But then you have your side gig, which may be your passion project, something that you are really good at. And you just are raising your hand and saying, why not me? And putting in the time, putting in the work. So I think that resonates with a lot of people, which is why I think that's kind of like the second most popular. She drops a new episode each Monday, and she has introduced her audience to a variety of side gig practitioners and gig economy experts to both inspire and educate you. But as someone who previously ran her own personal training company, Chickatelli is herself an expert on enterprise. So what tips would she give to someone considering a side gig venture? The first tip that I would give anyone who wants to start a side gig is choose something that you're really passionate about or you're really good at. You don't want to put in all this extra time and effort into something that you don't love. So really just hone in on what are you really good at? What do you love? But make sure it's something that you're passionate about. She also says, don't be afraid to look beyond maybe some of the plug and play gigs that are out there. Like, are you a phenomenal singer? How could you leverage that talent in a different way? I just had a stand up comedian on my show. Uh, She found out she was really great at comedy writing. And then she started going out and doing comedy. So just I would say kind of expand your horizons a little bit. Once you found that niche, make sure that you are looking at it as a business as early on as you possibly can. And the reason why I say that is because we get caught up of just being busy or we're putting in more money into our gig than we're actually taking out. Like, what is our bottom line profit? So treating it as a business or a small business as early on as possible, setting up a separate bank account for your earnings, maybe setting up a separate LLC for your earnings, you know, so when tax time comes, it's not a disaster. One way to do that. Employ the advice of an accountant or a tax professional. And I will use Rideshare as an example for this. Year after year, especially working at Lyft and working with drivers, I saw it every single year. They would get the 1099 in the mail and they would pass out. They didn't save any money for the taxes that they were going to have to pay. There's no withholding tax or tax savings plan for you on any of these platforms. So you have to be cognizant enough to actually start saving some of that money, start putting it away. Finally, Chickatelli says if you want to start a side gig from zero. Have patience. We're all used to kind of plugging ourselves into something. We're doing a, a job for X and you're transacting for that job and instant gratification. But again, if you're going back to the sweat equity side gig, you are patiently building something that's going to scale and grow. So realizing that it's not something that's just going to happen. You're not going to snap your fingers and you're going to have 100,000 followers. You're not going to have 100,000 downloads. You're not going to have that traction right away. So have patience. And by patience, she means it. I'm definitely not telling anyone to quit their nine to five. That is not the message. The message is to do your main gig well, but then have the discipline to allow the side gig to naturally evolve. Another way Chickatelli serves her audience with the Side Gig Central podcast is offering controversial topics, such as the strain that rideshare drivers have been experiencing on their platforms. The hourly earnings are actually drying up because most major metropolitan areas, Philadelphia, Delaware being one of them, the earnings are now significantly lower. You have to be out there longer to make the same amount of money you were making six months ago. And that strain might be amplified further nationwide following the passage of Assembly Bill 5 in California, which converts those working in the gig economy from independent contractors to employees of the rideshare company. What happens if everybody in California in 2020 turns into an employee, the whole side gig aspect 
aspect of rideshare is I'm going to turn this on and, and whenever I want and it's totally flexible. I answer to no one how that's going to maybe impact the future of rideshare. You can listen to current and past episodes of Chickatelli's podcast, Side Gig Central, on Spotify, as well as Apple and Google Podcasts. Andrew Scroy, WDEL, Delaware's News Radio.